put life in your sex life. Not many people preach this from the altar. But some of us, God has given us the assignment to demystify sex. Eh? Whatever is the mystery that makes pastors not to talk about it. I mean, why people are dying in their homes because that area is never scratched on the pulpit. God is a creator of sex. It's not a sin. He is a, a God that loves pleasure. It's not a joy killer. Genesis 38 from verse 8 to 10 tells me that God is interested in this matter. A man called Onan slept with his brother's wife in order to give seed to his brother who died without a child. That is their, their pattern those days. So after enjoying himself thoroughly with his brother's wife, when it was time to release so that the woman can have a baby, he came out and spilled it on the ground. The Bible says God saw it. He made him angry. He killed the man right on the spot. And went ahead and put it in the Bible for us. That is to tell you that God is interested in that aspect of marital relationship. Some of you think it's something you do only when God is not looking. When the partakes light. Eh? Let us do it quickly, quickly, quickly. Before God turns around to look at us, we have finished. No. Don't hurry. God knows you are doing it. It's part of the package for marriage. He intentionally gave it to you as pleasure for your, mo- for your marriage. To enjoy. And some of you, women here have never really enjoyed it. You have had two, three, four children, but you've never enjoyed it. Why? Because you have husbands who don't know how to do it. And do it well. There are some Christian men that rape their wives. They are Christians, but they rape their wives. And that is not good. A woman is not like electric lamp. You switch her on when you want. And switch her off when you want. It doesn't work like that. Some of you men here, the only romantic word on your lip is, Oh girl, I wear. Oh girl, I wear. Eh, Madam, turn. That is, that is not romance. That is not romance. A, a very, very powerful holiness church in my, st- in my town is in the amount I had it first. They don't call it sex from the pulpit like this so that they don't sound carnal. They call it fellowship. When it is time for that fellowship, there should be time for opening prayer. All those toasting, you know, I love you past my mother, you know, the making, the kissing, the caressing, everything that goes with it. That is the opening prayer. Then, of course, there should be time for praise and worship in the fellowship of the bedroom. It goes also with uh, testimonies. Remember all the good things that your, your husband is doing for you. All the good things. You know, talk to each other. Talk. Don't just do it as something you do in the dark. Everybody's mouth is sealed. And then you can't even look at each other's face. That's not how it should be done. It's a fellowship. Let it come alive. Because if you do it the right way, you wouldn't have to apply for visa before your wife gives you entrance. Like some of the men, you will whine and whine her like a microphone because, you know, already she's never romantic, you know. You have to whine and whine and whine, beg her and promise her heaven and earth. Then she will now tell you, my head, my shoulder, my knee, my toe, everywhere is paining me. Just leave me alone. Because she knows you don't know how to do it. Well, but when you do it well, nobody will even be the one to initiate and then begin to make requests. It will just flow naturally. And then by the time you do all the preambles, that's what Oibo calls for play. Play, play where they happen before the men thing. Then God allowed the woman's body in a way that by the time the proper thing is done, the body of the woman is ready to welcome the man of God to arrive to minister the word. 